Okay, here we are in Point Richmond again, and um, this time we want to talk about the Hunter 41 DS. DS. And just look at this beautiful view. Look how the the car lights are sparkling over on the bridge. But um, I have to say, I was really impressed with that salon just because of the amazing light that came in through the windows. We also loved the uh, cockpit. There was lots of room. There was those really neat two-person um, stern rail seats. Um, so those are the things we loved about it. The stern rail seats could comfortably seat two adults per stern rail seat. Yeah. So you could even have, you know, if they want to be a little cozy, you could have four, two different couples back there in those stern rail seats. The way the cockpit was set up was incredible. The primary winches, the ones that shoot your, your head sail, the sail in front, um, came right by the helm. So the helms person could uh, do some of the sheeting if need be. Uh, really well set up. Um, I love everything about that boat. There was a massive, I mean, for a boat that's only 40 and a half feet, a massive pantry um, just to the left of the main galley with two huge doors up and oh, down. Oh, that pantry was amazing, yeah. Um, and just all kinds of storage in the galley. I forgot Quite about remarkable. how great the galley was, actually. Oh, the, let's take a pause. Look at this view. Yeah, this is where we are now. Oh, it's so pretty. So Point Richmond is like a little secret that nobody knows about. And then in the distance, you can see Sutro Tower. And if you step over a little, you'll see some of the buildings in downtown San Francisco, way in the distance. Yeah, really beautiful. Anyway, continuing on with the Hunter so 41 DS. I loved uh, the entire boat. The only issue is the owner's cabin is aft, which is fine. That's actually good because there's less, <clears throat> the boat rocks less back there typically. So if you're out at sea, you can be below. And if you do an overnight sail, you can actually sleep down there. And you've got um, little ports that'll open. So whoever's on the helm can talk to whoever's sleeping down below if they need to communicate for some reason. But it's a thwart ships, meaning it's sideways. Um, and whoever is sleeping farther in is tucked the way the cockpit comes down. There's very little space back in there. I mean, I think I could do it and get used to it, but it's not ideal. And of course, if I have to hit the head in the middle of the night, I'm going to have to crawl over my dear sweetie. And bang your head. And, and probably bang my head. <laughs> 20 times until I finally learn my lesson and realize that I have to slither like a snake. That's about the <laughs> amount of room I would have. Okay, now we've got the better view of the city coming up here. Isn't that beautiful? Let's continue with our tour of the Hunter 41 DS. There is a convenient opening behind the helm to provide access to the swim step. As we mentioned, the cockpit is nice and roomy with plenty of room for guests. Propane tanks can be accessed on the port side of the swim step. On the other side of the swim step is a storage compartment. In the cockpit, there is also plenty of convenient storage, including at each corner below the stern rail seats, and then a large lazarette on the port side of the cockpit. We love the French door opening to the companion way. There are convenient built-in pockets for organizing your sheets. Easy steps down lead to a port side galley. The galley has lots of clever storage, a three burner stove, and two refrigerators that open from the front.
The cell board could also be removed for additional storage. We liked how the nav station had its own space. The salon and galley were filled with light and had plenty of headroom for Blair, who is 6'4". The boat is equipped with two heads. The owner's cabin head has a large shower with a glass door. The forward cabin is a Pullman cabin with a private head. So again, we will look at the numbers that I like to use for comparison between different boats. The comfort ratio gives you an idea of how comfortable the boat will sail in terms of how much it will rock and potentially upset those who are prone to seasickness especially. The formula was developed by Ted Brewer and um, is kind of a complicated formula that takes into account the displacement of the boat as well as the length of the water line and the length overall and the beam. Um, and generally, numbers of around 30 and above are considered good for blue water sailing. Um, coastal cruising, especially good, would be 25 to 30. So this boat, the 41DS, at 26 is pretty good. Another number I use to evaluate sailboats is the capsize screening formula. For this boat, it is 1.98, and you ideally want that to be below 2.0. In simple terms, it gives an idea of how likely the sailboat is to take a knockdown. So again, you want the number to be below 2.0, ideally. The number is actually derived from the formula, which is the beam of the boat divided by the cube root of the displacement in cubic feet of seawater. Um, so kind of an obtuse sound to the number, but essentially it tells you that if the boat has more displacement, the number is likely to be lower. And interestingly enough, if the beam is greater, the number can be somewhat higher. The next number I look at is the PHRF, which gives you an estimate of the speed of the sailboat. The number indicates the number of seconds per mile that your boat is supposedly slower than a theoretical boat which rates zero. So for simple terms, this boat's PHRF is 114, and it would be four seconds slower than a boat with a PHRF of 110 per mile sailed. I also look at the draft. Primarily for cruising, you don't want it to be too huge um, as you don't want to catch your keel on the bottom. If the sailboat is designed well, a draft between about 5.6 feet and 6.5 feet usually works out quite well. Hopefully this helped to demystify these numbers. They are easily available on sailboatdata.com and also looking up the PHRF, which can vary slightly from region to region. Say about the 41DS, I'm 6'4", about oh, 180, yeah. 185. Um, if, if in a couple, if both people are like 5'7", 5'8", or less, I actually think that boat is a pretty unbelievable but, home run. But the other cool thing though, as tall as you are, the um, standing up in the galley and in the salon, it, well, you had tons of head. The room. salon is six feet, 10 yeah. inches for standing. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, that, that is a, it's a sleeper. That's a really <laughs> spectacular boat actually. 
We hope you found our review of the Hunter 41 DS helpful. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe.